Hello and welcome to the first game in this round of the Immortals Tourney. We have YouTube Stars versus Two Potato Bros. Two Potato Bros, as you may know, is made up of Freshy and Mercy Time, whereas YouTube Stars has Napalm and TJ. On Two Potato Bros, we have uh, Mercy Time going Seraphin and Freshy going Aeon. And on YouTube Stars, we have TJ going Seraphin, and Napalm is going UEF, which may or may not be a valid choice on this map, considering the massive amount of water in close proximity to each other. He'll need to go fast Navy if he wants to control it. So, the map is The Cold Place. This is map, which was originally a TA map, recently remade by Incom, I believe. And it has lots of water floating reclaim in the middle with mexes very spread out all over the map. Unlucky early scout gets killed by Freshy. First kill of the game. We're seeing Selene's denying mexes and two tanks ready to counter this tank and Tham. We know. Sam and Celine. Drone out to the middle from Napalm is going to get a Mex in factory. Air scouts being exchanged. Mech marines currently moving their way across the top with a snoop. They should be spotted by spirits. Spirit goes down. Hopefully these forces will make it to this engineer. Take it out. Bomber now coming out from TJ. Great bomber micro right there. Double bomb! Hats off to TJ with that impressive bomber micro. Slowing down, well, stopping power production and slowing down land factory production. Mech Marines taking out mass extractors and factories completed for both Neopalm and Freshy. Looks like engineers just coming out of this one. Torpedo launcher going up. Submarine coming out of that factory. What Napalm needs is he needs submarines and frigates. Submarines to counter the opponent submarines and frigates to counter the auroras that will surely come towards him. He needs to stop building engineers and start building important stuff so that he can actually win. Navy. Navy is very critical on this map. And there's really a very few situations very few situations where both sides can have part of a very small ocean. Mercy time, pressing up with Artie, forcing TJ's ACU back. Aurora's come in, clean up this. Engineers reclaiming the factory. And looks like at this point, Two Potato Bros has one Navy and possibly the game. Napalm with double drone on his ACU and Freshy with double gun. Putting some pressure on. TJ going ahead all the way into Mercy Time's base. Targeting a factory for all bizarre, bizarre reasons in the world. There we go, now targeting other things. It would be nice to see that radar have gone down. Aurora's putting a lot of pressure. Looks like a point defense will be going up to defend against them. Drones being drowned. Trying to set up a factory back here. But will be intercepted by interceptors. Because I heard what that's what they do. Mercy time is 
I'm now about to be assisted by Freshie's Aurora Force. Coming in through the side. We'll be able to do some damage to TJ's force. TJ, staying around. Regenerating. And Napalm is building anti-air defense. A drop from Napalm into the middle. Plan is to reclaim as much as possible before being destroyed by three subs. I doubt those engineers even paid for themselves. Napalm trying to get the gun, using his two drones to assist. Now being pushed back by Freshie. Freshie time. Is that a gun? No gun, no one upgrades, but loads of deck one already. And a war is now coming in, putting pressure on. TJ says he's dying. Very true. He's very much outnumbered against the Zuthis and Thames. Both players have their guns now. New bomb going to work. Getting loads of veterancy. The first he's got his double gun. Napalm would be in a lot better shape if he had Tech 2. Taking a lot of Aurora and gunfire. Aurora Overcharge is coming out, getting him crucial veterancy. Tech 2 point events trying to go up. That probably will not be completed at the rate of this push. I think Napalm is seeing that his partner's dying. Going all in on this push. Trying to win it. He's successfully dodging Artie. 175 kills, 76, 77. Getting veterancy left, right, and center. Now, Tech 2 land out for Freshie. He's got some build capacity on it, putting out assault tank. I guess because he wants the amphibious tank. Now we're seeing submarines come out, but they'll be killed easily, and maybe we'll be lost yet again. Now Napalm, an army of one, taking on a massive take one fourth. Overcharge is doing their best. Mercy time. Much larger force. Pushing in against TJ. Napalm. 131 kills manages to take out most of Freshie's force because with the gun, UEF gun, it's one shot, one kill with Aurora. Napalm calling in GG, realizes that his partner is dying, that he's TML coming right for his base. Tech 2 Maxes have been destroyed. Forces in the back. Ultra is pushing out. Now that TJ is dead, these forces can come around. So that will make it a one point lead for two potato bros. That means if the YouTube stars will have want to come back, they will have to win both get one v one games. So good game from both sides. UEF definitely hurt. Napalm's ability to get naval control. If he had been Seraphin or Aeon, he would have had a much better time. So I've been your host, Swackle, and if you have any ideas on how to improve these casts, please leave them in the comments below. Remember to like, subscribe, all that good YouTube stuff. Also, a cruiser here would have been helpful. And good night. Well, actually, not good night. On to the next cast! Hello and welcome to another Forged Alliance Forever cast. This is game two of Two Potato Bros versus YouTube Stars. We have TJ as the Red Cybern and Mercy Time as the Blue Seraphin on Icelands. 
So let's see what's going on, TJ. Don't know what that's about. Should resolve itself. Going 1P gen, 3 mexes. Mercy time going first two Selenes. First three Selenes before getting NGs. He's getting two P gens, three mexes of P gen, and then to the hydro. TJ's already at the hydro. Those first three Selenes will be quite expensive for Mercy Time. Let's see. How long does it take to make a Selene? I should know this, but... Four seconds. So that's essentially one engineer. That isn't that bad. Nice placement on them, though. See if any raiding groups are coming. And they will deny mass extractors. Now we're seeing second air from TJ. He's rushing out an early gesture. A lot of people seem to be liking that strategy recently. Not sure why. If someone knows why, like if there's a balance change, can you please leave that in the comments below? That would be much appreciated. This first raiding group was spotted by the Selene and will be intercepted by two tanks and two Selenes. Gesture comes around. It may have been spotted. First air scout. Gesture arrives. Flak, Flak is forced out. Gesture takes three kills. Four kills. Keeps on going. Tank pushing an NG back. Finds the ACU, but it's being attacked by a... Interceptor. Should be shot down. If you heard that beep, it was... The video stopped rendering. So... Less frame drops. Yay! Mantis to defend the mass extractor coming out. A lot of power for TJ. He's investing a lot in... Quite a bit in power. He's got four land factories... Versus two. So a lot in both factories and power. Rather than units. Or maybe I'm mistaken, it just seems that Mercy Time has more units on the field list right now. Point defense, four mexes, and a factory going up on the left side. But meanwhile, right side is being raided by two thams. A single mantis retreating against a large force is quite out of position but it might manage to make it around. Dormant raiding group on the left side. Mercy Time has not made a play to capture... Whoa. These... Sorry about that. Um, mexes. Well, now he is, but... It'll be two minutes before he gets them all, if this raiding group doesn't attack. Very nice. Land spam for for TJ. He's also doing a lot of reclaim, getting that eco up. Although surprisingly little investment in eco now, other than all this power. He's wasting quite a bit of power. He needs to spend that on something like an ACU upgrade. And Celine goes down. Now push, two simultaneous pushes on the right and left side of the battlefield. Point defense, which might be up just in time. Nope, Mercy Time has stopped his push. And TJ is trying to kite to the side, but that'll be 
squashed by more Thams and Zuthies. Hmm? Is that the official pronunciation? I have absolutely no clue. Now, a large interceptor force currently stationed up there for British time. Oh, I totally missed this. Manti, right in the back of his base, attacking Tech 2 mass extractors. I'd like to see them kill all these NGs. Forces are redirected. Mass extractor goes down to about half health, but it's, the raiding group is destroyed. Celine's art. Just crazy like that. A drop's now coming out for mercy time. He'll be dropping to the right first. If there's four engineers on that transport, how many will land? All of them. This attacking force is cleaned up nicely by a group of Manti. Manti, Mantis, right here, just doesn't care that that force is there. Just, just not care. Is TJ utilizing this power? He's still not utilizing that power. He needs to start utilizing it. Or otherwise, it's just a waste. Tech 2 land now, with rhinos coming out. Any Tech 2 land response? Does he know there's Tech 2 land? No clue. He has no clue that there's Tech 2 land right there. Now a sneaky Tham Zuthi drop by Mercy Time. Manta will have to be redirected to deal with that. Very annoying. Now over here we're seeing massive fight. This force against has rhinos. No, hoplite? Not used producing rhinos, but now it has hoplite. If this force were... If these forces were together when that happened, this force would be dead right now. Of course, it's still sneaking around the back. But a stealth field and mobile flak should take care of that. Because they need stealth and mobile flak. A nice drop with a single engineer. Plan is to build a point of to reclaim and build the point defense, but that won't do anything against four engineers. Wait, nope. His plan is to reclaim. They're building the point defense. My bad. I'd like to see TJ get an upgrade on his ACU. He's the power. There's no reason for him not to. No much larger tech you spam. No Ulshivas coming out from Mercy Time. But nice use of drops. I really like to see more players drop like that. Massive charge with Zuthis at now TJ's base. But huge amounts of numbers in Manti for TJ. Just running that force over. Meanwhile, a sneaky force trying to get through is destroyed. Hoplites, rhinos, and Manti are pushing right in to the leftward expansion of Mercy Time. There's nothing he can do at this point. Except directing more forces. Looks like essentially everything on this side of the battlefield is being redirected to try and defend off this expansion. Success is marginal, the factories are going down. Hoplite's using the range to counter the arty. We're seeing an even map... well... no, we're not really. A good map control advantage for TJ at this point. Denying this expansion is very nice. Mercy time. No upgrades on the ACU. Fairly certain. No upgrades on the ACU. TJ. No tech 2. 
Top lights running in. Now Ultra's out. Where is the Tech 2 factory? Whoa, that's that's a lot of build capacity. He really wants these Ultra's, and he really needs them. That means these hop lights have to kite if they want to stay alive. Not run right into the force. Tech 2 flak. MTs should not fly over Tech 1 flak. Not a good plan. Now simultaneous assault right through the middle of these Manti Rhinos can take out this build capacity. There's not much left he could do to counter it. Nice use of stealth. Except he would need more stealth for that to be very effective. A half thought out push fails. And is forced to fall back. Now TJ pushing in with Manti. Emergency tech one point defenses are going up. Pulling build capacity away from the Tech 2 factory. Now we're seeing Tech 3 land out from TJ, pumping out loyalists to cause general mayhem. Because general mayhem is the best kind of mayhem. The push on the left side finally destroyed, leaving this beautiful field of reclaim. Go, Interceptor, go! You can kill off that entire Air Force. We believe in you. No, we don't. Meanwhile, small Tech 2, Tech 1 force moving in against the right expansion of Mercy Time. We're seeing four Ultravas in an attempt to counter. Those will have some success. And meanwhile, another push. Loyalists coming out against the Ultra Buzz and Tech One Point Defense. Push is just coming out left, right, and center for TJ. He's grouping a lot of Loyalists together. Are we seeing Tech 3? No, he's forced to keep producing Tech 2 Ultra Buzz. And now a dr nice NG drop in the back of TJ's face. What, what is the purpose of this? Their plan? Plan is tech one point offenses everywhere. That is an okay plan, I guess. Ultra was now managing to move down the center. No, not down the center, down the right side. I really apologize. I cannot talk today. Multiple tech one point defenses for Mercy Time. He's got five getting his sixth. Very little build capacity left on the factory. And now getting TMD. A nice raiding group has moved around the back of Mercy Time's base. Takes out a Tech 2 mass extractor, but should be cleaned up by a group of six Ultra Loads. Loyalists are going to work. Right now we have a massive Loyalist force. This is a beautifully created map. I'd like to tip my hat to whoever created this. I have no clue who you are. You're not in com. We created that other map. Or recreated it more precisely. TJ just keeping the pressure on for this entire game. Forcing Mercy Time to be on the defensive. Spending mass on Tech 1 point defenses instead of a Tech 2 spam. Or a Tech 3 spam. At this point, I'd, I would like to see TJ switch to brick production in the event that this goes to Tech 3, which it is right now. So we'll see bricks fairly soon. Because the Seraphim can counter Ultra Loyalists. Not sure why the Loyalists are retreating against a Tech 2 force. Now we're seeing Renegades against a large Tech 1, Tech 2 force. The TJ is bringing in reinforcements and retreating his main force. This was surprisingly successful. Take, took out these three 
mass extractors before being stopped. The pressure's being put on. Loyalists running in on the right side. Mercy time has little defenses. More emergency tech on point defenses. Factories, build capacity, everything's just going down. Loyalists running straight in. Egypt is sitting around with Tech 2 on his ACU. But Mercy Time is being targeted by Renegades. He's got Tech 2, no veterancy. And very little air and no anti air. Loyalists in the base, overcharges are coming out to deal with them, but at minute 25. I have to say, TJ has won the game. There's no way Mercy Time can come back from this. It's all a matter of time. Pull these renegades and loyalists finish him off. Just if these guys targeted, target fired Mercy Time, it would be over. Attempt to build Tech 2 Black with marginal success. Somehow Mercy Time has managed to survive. Should be dead by now. Tech 2 Flak has managed to prevent the gunships from finishing them off. And I guess handfuls of very good overcharges. But at this point there's no way he could possibly come back. Down below 3k health, 2k health, 1k health. GG all around. And, at mini 26, TJ defeats Mercy Time, and I believe that means we'll have to go on to round 3, yes, because Napalm went UEF and lost the previous game, so this is a 1-1, one, one, win, 1-win one win for both teams, we will now progress on to the next game on this map, again. And seamless transition. Hello to another Forge Alliance Forever cast. I'm your host Swackle, and today we're looking at Game Three of Two Potato Bros versus YouTube Stars. Up top we've got Napalm switching things up, going Seraphin, the blue Seraphin, and we've got Freshy as the orange Siren. Freshy going first air, might be doing a gesture rush. Napalm, first land, three P-Gens. Two mexes. First energy to the hydro. Now we're seeing Freshy. Yep, going first gesture. You have to sacrifice a lot to get out first gesture. But if it's successful, you can completely destroy your opponent's build order. Because no one has air or flacked. So, you can get that out about 1, mi one minute 30. It's about how fast you can possibly get a gesture in this game. Now, Freshy's eco was completely wrecked. Now, Flax is coming out from the factory. Gesture targets one engineer. Flax are out. Gesture targets Flax. Down to about half health. Please kills another engineer. Flax spots it. Stationary Flax is now up. Ear factory. Meanwhile, Freshy is building power to recover from that crazy build order. The gesture looking for things to kill. Doesn't find any. I'd like to see this flak head over here. Protect that energy. But we are seeing a group of two Thams and a Selene move down the left side of the battlefield into Freshy's leftward expansion. 
which he isn't even at yet, but he's put out an air scout. How's Freshy C go? Surprisingly decent. Gesture finds this. See if the flak had been there. The gesture would have decided against going there. But I don't know, that's just me. Interceptor finds the gesture. The gesture will be going down. Bomber gets one engineer kill. Two engineer kill. If he pilots that bomb and get hits it right there then this bomber is probably better than the gesture. Bomb comes in. Five kills on that bomber. Already that it's been more effective than Freshie's gesture. Puts out a bomber but an interceptor is right there. Complete waste of power and mass. Freshie's build order is trash. He has no expansions. He had to sacrifice too much to get out that early gesture and as a result he's forfeited both expansions and a lot of power and build capacity that Napalm has been able to build up. He's got four land factories now producing units compared to Freshies 2. This bomber's still alive with seven kills. Although Napalm hasn't managed to tie down this expansion yet got some Manti running around, doing their own thing. A nice Selene hiding. If these fans come around, kill this flak. Kill a lot of flak. And maybe this upgrading Tech 1 Mass Extractor, it'll be good. Three mechs go down, but the force is cleaned up. Interceptor numbers definitely in favor of Napalm. So far he's made up greatly for his performance in the first game. If that bomber hit, hits these NGs, it'll just be the MVP. But it looks like that's not happening. It tries to escape, gets shot down by three interceptors, and now Manti in the back of... back of Napalm's face. Those shouldn't be there. Now, very, very large force from Napalm moving down into his leftward expansion. Right at Freshie's ACU. Fortunately, he doesn't know that's there, otherwise he probably would attack the main force. Needs to do some scouting to see that there's an ACU. Now, an early air fight. This may determine who has air control for the entire early half of the game. Much better micro from Napalm. Attacking from the back. And Napalm wins air for Leon. He also has double he also has oh fifty percent more build capacity on that factory. Transport out for Freshie. And now two NGs on the power spam versus Well the power spam has pretty much all been stopped. Get one NG, but he already has a huge power sim complete. Now, massive amount of units currently moving around the back of Freshie's base. Moved around the ACU. That would have been bad. A single kill. Now, this force comes around. Feels that. Freshie being very cautious with the transport. Moving it around the back of the map to drop here not want to be seen by all these interceptors. Freshie moving his ACU in. And Napalm successfully putting a bunch of Sam and Selene inside of his opponent's base. A lot of power severely damaged. Some engineers killed. But surprisingly little damage. You should have focus fired those units. Most of more power could have died. Now, Freshie finding himself in a, surrounded by a horde of Tech 1 units, and he goes down! 11 minutes. Did not see that one coming. He, he should have had these units in support. Napalm 
pulling out quite the victory against Freshy. Allowing YouTube stars to get the win of the of this round two match. Coming back after the loss of the first game, TJ makes a nice win. And Napalm absolutely dominates Freshy. This game might have been might have gone a little better for Freshy had he not tried that early gesture. Or had that not early had that early gesture not been utilized so poorly. In fairness, there wasn't much for it to target, but Well, if you have any suggestions on how I can improve these casts, please leave them in the comments below. Please remember to like, subscribe, do all that good YouTube stuff, and good night!